Tonight we're going to be talking about the, uh, the energy transition of the 21st century. And this is an event of no small uh, importance. Energy transitions have been going on for a long time, as long as we've been human. We humans are, are energy junkies. We, we uh, gather energy from the environment just as other organisms do. And, and for most of our time, our main source of energy has been our, the food that we eat. Uh, but our genius as humans has been our ability to find ways of harvesting energy in other ways. This is a process that uh, has kicked into high gear, if you will, in the last couple of centuries as a result of our ability to harness fossil fuels. If the, the buildup to the Industrial Revolution, the centuries and millennia leading up to it, we're about incrementally increasing the amount of energy available to humankind. The Industrial Revolution was about doubling and tripling and quadrupling that available energy again and again. Essentially, production profile of oil fields over time uh, can take many shapes. These two in, uh, oil fields in Russia, these two in the US, uh, can take a, sort of a smooth bell-shaped curve over time or uh, can reach a plateau. And this, this was Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. And the reason for the plateau was that uh, oil from Prudhoe Bay was sent to the lower 48 through a pipeline. And so the capacity of the pipeline was an, an effective practical limit on how fast this stuff could be uh, extracted or should be extracted. So thus the, uh, the long plateau and then of course geological limits took over and Prudhoe Bay oil production started to decline. It's been declining pretty substantially ever since. Occasionally we find an oil field with more than one peak in production. But if, if one takes lots of oil fields and averages them together, the tendency is for them to approach a kind of bell curve which is classically what happened here in the United States, which used to be the world's foremost oil producing nation, the land of the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, we, we achieved peak of oil discovery in the US in 1930, peak of extraction in 1970. And um, today we import two thirds of the oil that we use. This instance of peak oil, which is history, it's not theory, uh, really deserves, I think, to be called the most significant economic event of the 20th century. It was the hinge uh, that has shaped our experience over the last 35 years. Not only have we begun to import most of the oil that we use, but our economy has changed as a result. We're borrowing a billion dollars a day to pay for that oil. And of course, our foreign policy has changed. We developed this peculiar obsession with other parts of the world that have lots of oil. Many people look at this and they say, oh yes, but what about Alaska? What about the Gulf of Mexico? Uh, or if thinking of global oil production peak, which everyone knows is going to happen at some point in the relatively near future, uh, may, may that not be delayed by further oil discoveries or new technology, whatever. Well, again, the US is instructive here because when we add Alaska and the Gulf of Mexico to the picture, we get a couple of outlying bumps. And these, these were very large new oil provinces. And yet they weren't enough to delay peak or to change the overall picture. Uh, here we are today. We're likely to see a little bit of a bump over the next two or three years from the Gulf of Mexico. But then after that, it's back downhill again. And we've been using lots of new technology and oil extraction, water flooding of fields, gas flooding of fields, and so on. And again, it's not making much difference to the essential picture. Uh, once peak hits, that tends to be the end of the story. Now we're seeing the same thing happen in country after country. Uh, important oil discoveries in the North Sea occurred during the 1970s. Remember after the US 
oil production peak, we had the oil shocks of 1973 and 79. So this was the period in which we were finding oil now in Prudhoe Bay and in the North Sea. Very good news for the world because these were sources of oil that were not in the Middle East, not under the control of OPEC. So we went about extracting this oil very efficiently, very quickly, with the consequence that North Sea oil production peaked only 30 years after peak of discovery, around the year 2000. And all three of these countries, Denmark, Norway, and Great Britain, are now in substantial decline. Uh, in the case of Great Britain, about 8% uh, per year decline in oil production. And we're seeing, again, the same thing in many other countries. I won't go through the long list. Uh, Mexico is uh, peaking right about now. Its largest oil field, Cantarell in the Gulf of Mexico, which is one of the world's largest oil fields, is now declining uh, precipitously. Uh, last, uh, from last year to this year, the decline rate has been 20%. And this spells real trouble for Mexico's economy. According to Chevron, oil production is declining in 33 of the 48 largest oil producing countries. Now, for a few of those countries, it may be possible to reverse that trend through extraordinary investments and rates of drilling. But for the, the substantial majority, we're talking about an inexorable final decline in production that will go on for, for decades. But will never reverse itself. Globally, oil discoveries peaked around 1964, have been declining ever since. We're using about four or five barrels of oil for every new barrel that we discover these days. So there are lots of signs that we may, may be getting very close to global oil production peak. And in fact, if we're talking about regular conventional oil, good old crude, onshore, probably the peak has already happened. Uh, we've seen declining production of regular conventional oil since May of 2005. Now, if you add uh, non-conventional sources, deep water oil, natural gas liquids, the tar sands, uh, biofuels, and all that stuff, well, we're just about flat, in fact, over the past 18 months. Uh, we may still see uh, some increases, but the best guesses are that we're virtually at peak right now. Part of the reason for that is what's happening in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia, of course, a member of OPEC, uh, does not release, uh, excuse me, does not allow third party inspections of its oil reserves or production or exports for that matter. And so we sort of have to take their word for it. The Saudis tell us that they have 260 billion barrels of oil in place and that they'll be able to continue increasing their rate of extraction for a long time to come. But in fact, uh, Saudi oil production has declined by about 8% over the past 18 months. And signs are, this is being discussed, by the way, in great detail on a website called theoildrum.com. And it's, it's a discussion site. A lot of the folks who, who uh, weigh in there are petroleum engineers or geologists. And the, uh, the speculation is that Saudi production is going to look something like this in the future, that uh, uh, there are currently very high rates of drilling taking place in the country. So reworking of existing fields is going to result in some increase of production down the line but it's not probably going to get back up to the levels that we were seeing a couple of years ago. And so in effect, Saudi oil production may already have peaked. And since the Saudis are the only ones in the world with spare production capacity, supposedly, this in effect uh, means that the world is probably at peak uh, now. Again, on the oildrum.com, uh, this is a, a graph that really sort of says it all. This is uh, uh, the dollar price of oil. The uh, red line is actual production, and the black line is projected, de is past demand and projected demand. And as you can see, production and demands or, or forecast demands start to uh, diverge right around 
2009 and never catch up with one another after that point. This is the uh, overall picture of the situation from the Association for the Study of Peak Oil, which shows regular conventional oil, non-conventional oil, natural gas, uh, and non-conventional gas. And as you can see, the conventional oil peaks around 2005, uh, all petroleum liquids around 2010. And those peaks are uh, so overwhelming that they take natural gas with them, even though global natural gas may not in and of itself reach its peak for another decade or two. We don't really know. The information is not all that good. If you look at oil and gas together, the total energy from those two fuels is likely to reach a peak around 2010. So that's peak oil.